Three, four, three, my favorite little money makers. How's Halo Infinite going? Ah! Well, shit. So I had the honor of being among the first selected to play test Halo Infinite this past weekend. The test consisted of three maps, bot slayer previewing most of the bot difficulties, weapon drills, and a glimpse into the customization and battle pass systems. I was playing on an Xbox One S, which means I had the shittiest version of the game possible, but I still managed to have a lot of fun and recorded some useful data. In this video, I will review all my thoughts of the flight and things I'd like to see changed or spruced up. These are just my opinions though, so if you don't agree with some of them, feel free to respectfully share in the comments. We'll love to discuss. Also, I wasn't able to try out PvP since I was at work and it only lasted for 3 hours, thanks 343, so won't be able to provide opinions on that. But other than that, without further ado, let's get right into it. While the menus fluctuated between being operational and unresponsive, the overall look of them is pretty good. Miles better than Halo 5, that's for sure. It was easy to navigate and the moving backgrounds and lively environments that were once a part of Halo 5's beta returned here. It seems like they're not going anywhere. Hopefully. Whenever you joined a fire team, all your Spartans would be chilling there by the Pelican waiting to deploy, and I had no issues purchasing the Battle Pass or any of the items in the shop with the credits that they gave us. The weapons bench and the armory hall also displayed your Spartan, the weapons, and the vehicles all very nicely with a cool spotlight and dim lighting. Overall, well designed, and not much I can say on how to improve it besides consistent functionality. The customization in this game rivals Reach, and if not, it's beaten it. There are so many options just in this flight alone. From the usual stuff like helmets, shoulder pads, and knee guards to the more detailed things like gloves and tactical packages on the hip. Some visors had cool lighting effects on them too, and I wouldn't put it past them to add animated ones like they did in MCC. Coatings are also not as bad as I initially thought. I still prefer to choose my own colors for my armor, but the varied materials and designs per coating does make for some pretty killer looks. And the AIs are actually a great addition as well. Their quirky personalities and voice lines added more to the game than I thought they were going to. I genuinely enjoy their company. Fred is the best AI though, don't at me. And this isn't even everything. They have said that armor effects will be returning as well, and there will be preset armor kits for all the unoriginal fuckboys who just want to run around as a meal. Speaking of which, highly recommend adding the addition of custom armor kits too. With all this customization in the game, I'd love to make some preset combinations and quickly swap to them whenever I feel like it. Kinda like... Unfortunately, I wasn't able to unlock everything in the Battle Pass because there was a glitch that didn't give most of the insiders XP after matches. The only way I could get XP was to complete the challenges which rewarded 100 to 150 each, and it took 500 to go up a level in the pass. I feel like that's a pretty important bug to fix if you're trying to test the progression, but whatever. Obviously this won't be the case in the final game, I hope. And the test pass showed off some pretty cool stuff. Even if you don't pay for it, you still get XP boosts and challenge swaps for free with almost every level. And knowing that I can complete it without fear of missing out puts my mind at ease. The shop also had a helmet and armor coating not available in the past, as well as two sets of weapon coatings, which don't look too shabby. Hopefully they'll always have ways to earn credits for free since I plan to use all the ones I pay for on battle passes. I didn't capture any of my own footage for weapon drills, but I can guarantee you that I put more time into it than I thought I would. One of my main problems in Halo is playing for X amount of hours a day, getting off, then getting back on the next day, and it feels like all my skill evaporated. There's never been an efficient way to warm up in Halo. Perhaps firefights, but that really isn't the most effective way to get your aim back against real players. You would just have to suck it up and get that ass beat in your first few matches before your brain finally gets back into that mindset. So far, the Academy is looking like the perfect place for warming up as soon as you get on or increasing accuracy with your most difficult weapons. There's three difficulty levels to practice per weapon, and I found myself having fun and actively trying to beat my own scores. It's pretty addicting. Well, when it worked, it was addicting and fun. Time will definitely be spent here in the final game, and I know for damn sure which weapons I'll need help with. Bots are brand new to Halo, and they act as training partners to even further your skills. There are four difficulties you can set these bots to, but here they only preview three out of four of them. I'm very impressed with how they're programmed. They go for power weapons and power-ups, they pick up your weapons when they kill you, they target low shield opponents, they strafe a lot, they crouch shoot a lot, and they jump shot a lot. Well, maybe not a lot of jump shooting, but they definitely do the other two a lot. They really are the best tool for honing your skills and practicing new techniques. However, they still need work. Even at Spartan difficulty, they weren't really that hard. It's like all-star difficulty in Rocket League. 
Like, yeah, they know what they're supposed to do, but sometimes they still break and make stupid decisions. Like, at the very start of every match, they run to the same spot every single time, allowing us to set up easy ambushes and multi-kills. There have been multiple times to start taking shots at a bot from long range as well, and it just started shooting up in the sky and strafing in a circle. They're still good training partners, but need more intelligence put into them. As for the gameplay itself, I need to say this first. Please fix the frame rate for the Xbox One version. I cannot stress it enough. I know this build is two months old, so it probably performs a lot better now, but holy shit, the frame rate dipped constantly during my time playing. Every time I went in for melees or got into huge gun fights with two plus bots, hell, even when I was using certain weapons like the BR Kneeler, the frame rate kept plummeting and it was heavily affecting my aim. So in case you're wondering why my aim is ass in these clips, that's why. I don't know why my Xbox One captured these games with a higher, more consistent frame rate, but trust me, my view did not look like this. I'm not going to act like I have the truest aim out there either, but it really did affect my gameplay and enjoyment of the flight. As for the gameplay itself, it felt great when the frames were consistent, games were well paced, item placement was fair, and the maps felt like the perfect size. Only criticism I have is upping the sprint speed just a few more notches so, that's it, so that there's a clear difference between running and walking. Although, I do like how the speed is low though, it encourages players to stay in the fights and run away less often. Overall, the HUD looks good. However, there are two things I want to see change. First, the HUD feels too small, especially the radar. I don't know if it's because they're trying to utilize modern TVs and monitors, or if it's because of my second reason, and that reason being that there's too much information at the bottom. Like look, the score, radar, weapons and ammo, equipment, and grenades are all at the bottom of the screen, leaving only your shields and health at the top. I don't have a problem with weapons being on the bottom, like I guess there's an upside to it since it allows you to be more vigilant, but personally I think it should either be like every other Halo with weapons and ammo on the top right, grenades in the top left, radar and scoreboard being at the bottom corners, or at least move grenades and equipment back to the top. Other Halos made it really obvious what you had in your inventory, but here I frequently forgot I had equipment on me, and threw the wrong grenade numerous times thinking I had another equipped. There needs to be a more obvious notification or visual showing what you have so these slip-ups happen less often. As for the medals, they are also pretty small in size and have been moved to the middle of the screen. Getting medals in Halo is always really fun and a bigger deal to players than most others realize. That's why I want them to increase in size, but if they do that, maybe they shouldn't be in the middle of the screen because it obstructs the view. If you're not going to move inventory information and keep everything at the bottom, why not use the remaining space at the top for that? Now on the PvP side of things, I heard that the radar only shows blips when someone is sprinting or shooting. And I don't think that should be a thing, at least in casual multiplayer. If you're going to keep that, please restrict it to ranked. They are 3 for 3 with maps currently. All of these maps are bangers. Perfect size, fun to traverse, a few secrets tucked away, and limitless potential for equipment. Now let's get more into detail with each of them. First of all, I love y'all for paying respects to my homie Johnson in this map. We're having our hearts. <laughs> Look, tears, man. Uh, but this map is honestly great. I love how they put an out in the top middle of the map to the bottom middle to prevent it from being a chokehold. However, I feel like there are two parts in the map that were barely used. Well, not barely used, but I rarely ever went through there. There's no incentive to go to green building except if you want grenades. There's no reason to go to the top of the tower either unless you want some sight lines with a sniper. Now, maybe these are by design and that's the intent, but I've just noticed I rarely went to these two places during my time playing. Then again, I was just going where the bots were going, so that may have something to do with it. This map is great mainly due to the grapple shot, but I do fear how it performed and will perform during PvP matches due to the large open space in the main room of the map. There is enough elevation doorways and some cover to divert attention in between though, so it may not be so bad. This map with active camo seems deadly though due to all the various hallways, nooks, and crannies to ambush people. I like how the precision weapons are placed at the top of the map as well so players can take distant shots if no one pays attention to those areas. This map is probably the most traversable. There's not a single place I didn't go. Grapple Shot probably helped with that, but I never neglected anything around this entire map even when I didn't have the right equipment. Arguably, this is probably the best one in the flight. Welcome to the sequel to Zanzibar, or Last Resort, or Stone Town, or whatever the hell you want to call it. But right, this is probably my favorite map in terms of looks. It would be my favorite overall, but it felt like my friends were at their worst here, so I wasn't able to fully enjoy it. I do love the three-layered symmetrical feel of the map, though, and the 
plush shaped building with the fruit stands is surprisingly fun to run around and shoot in. That building also plays a bigger part in traversal for the map than I originally anticipated. This is also where they showed off wildlife running around the map as you played, and I want more of this. Seeing a racket blast into a cloud of blood from crossfire or seeing a chicken featherless after surviving an explosion adds a comedic effect and sense of livelihood to the maps never, be never before seen across the franchise. Unless of course you forget to mention Halo 3 Rat, that guy's a legend. Also love how there's a vent you can drop down to the bottom of the church side of the map, which is where those rats live. It can be greatly useful for flanks and surprise attacks. One thing I'll say before talking about the weapons is that I absolutely hate how they made the default option for zooming while aiming have a slower sensitivity. And don't get me wrong, having the option for the players that want it is cool, but for it to be default? That needs to change. I'm used to Halo having the same or close to the same sensitivity whether I zoom or hip fire. This change has messed me up so many times during numerous gunfights across the flight. And now that that's out of the way, let's rapid fire through these weapons. Competitive sweats will tell you to nerf it, but please don't. This is the best AR we've had since 4. It has range, a great damage output and time to kill, controllable recoil, and just all around feels satisfying to use. It actually feels like a viable tool that I found myself wanting to keep around when swapping weapons are on the battlefield. And a skilled player can still outgun it. Please don't nerf it. It's perfect. It's fun to use, but their projectiles need a buff in speed. I understand that you need to lead shots with it, but the shots feel like it takes too long to reach the enemy anyway at a far enough range, thus making the shots harder to hit, period. But you know, frame rate also has a big part in failing to aim too. Now if there's any weapon that needs lower recoil, it's this. If this is supposed to be the new mid to long range weapon replacing the DMR, or at least that's how I thought it was, it should be easier to control. Because of the recoil, zooming felt almost worthless to me, and it was more effective at close range than long range. Shit bounced around more than Megan Thee Stallion's butt implants. Other than the Commando, this is definitely the weapon I had the most trouble with. Frames played a part as usual, but I noticed even people with perfect frames were having trouble keeping their aim with it. Now, I don't know if it needs more aim assist on console or if the accuracy needs to be turned up, but it does fill the role of the quick draw sidearm you can clean up with, and it feels like a weapon you can easily decide to get rid of when you find more powerful ones on the map. Unlike Halo 5's overpowered ass Magnum. Wait, didn't they say they were planning to bring the Magnum back? Oh no. Being straight up, the charge takes way too long. Its primary fire is actually viable in this build, but most people that pick it up is picking it up to overcharge it. I understand nerfing it to make it harder to drop shields and score noob combos, but during the heat of battle, it takes way too long to set up. By the time you get the shot off and swap weapons, you'll be dead. I honestly love this shotgun more than any of the other ones in the series, and I wasn't expecting that. It feels so great to get kills with it. However, this is one of the main weapons that dipped my frame rate, and I noticed an inconsistent firing rate when testing it out in the weapon drills. I picked this up quite a bit, but this is certainly a weapon that will be hard for me to master. In enclosed spaces, this thing is a beast due to the ricocheting shots, but outside, it's more difficult. There's also a risk factor turning the fire vertically to get more shots on the enemy, However, you'll need sharper aim to get the kill. And I like that. This is the strongest needler ever, holy shit! <laughs> part of me wants it to get nerfed, but another part of me wants it to stay the way it is. I found myself picking it up a lot due to it melting the bots, and the bots certainly melted my ass with it too. It has varied from being a good weapon to being other crap in each mainline Halo game, so... I think I kind of want it to stay like this, but I'm not quite sure yet. I'll always suck with this thing, and that's just a sad truth. I did nab a couple kills with it, but there's not much I can say. It's a sniper. Sniper button brute. Still can barely use it. It's fun though, and I can already see the kebab memes. Probably my favorite gun from the flight. It is so much fun to kill with this thing. Unlike the plasma pistol, the long charge up time for this is justified since the secondary fire covers a large area with actual fire. If only that bug wasn't there so it actually did damage in multiplayer. Rockets always feel great in Halo, but this one in particular feels very fun to use. Seems like the rocket itself has a higher velocity and a bigger explosion radius. Hope it stays that way. I started to get a better understanding of it on the last day of the flight, but honestly, I don't like this thing. It feels like a neuter version of Taurus's gavel from 5. Now, I'm glad the splash energy is now visible, but it just feels like the hammer didn't work half the time for me. Even when you're point blank, sometimes it still takes two slams, or sometimes it didn't even cause any damage at all. Now I don't know if that was a bug, or if that was just me sucking, or both. 
But then you're gonna add a longer swing on top of that when it barely grants reward and kills? I don't know, man. I think this one needs to go back to a drawing board. Either keep the swing but add a more consistent splash damage that guarantees kills at closer ranges, or increase the swing speed and make the splash smaller like in the old games. From what I felt, all the grenades felt satisfying to use in that great physics. Especially spikes, since when you throw them on the ground now, the spikes ricocheting off the walls actually have a greater chance of killing somebody. Only thing I'd say is maybe make the plasmas explode a bit quicker. Honestly, with the longer lunging range, melees feel great, and when I whiff it actually makes sense. I don't think y'all should touch it. Now I'm putting these together just to say I love how you can save these and use them whenever they feel necessary now. Failing to use them and dying also results in them being dropped on the ground and somebody else picking it up. Such a great idea and I love that. Other than that, they work the same as always and I really have no complaints about them. These need to deploy quicker. I feel like dropping them in the middle of being ambushed or in the middle of a gunfight defeated the purpose since it takes a full second for them to even come up. It has killed me more times than it saved me, it feels like. I recommend shortening the deploy time to at least half a second. That's quick enough to possibly save you, but can still give the enemy enough time to get a well-placed shot on you if you're weak. Breaking sections of it off is awesome too, but they're a little weak right now. I feel like I'll have to play against actual players to truly get a better opinion of their strength. They put Promethean Vision in the needle, and honestly, I'm here for it. Reminds me of the sonar from Titanfall 2. I love how you can stick it onto your teammates and they can run around and reveal enemies that way too. I think showing their tags may be a bit too much though. I think it should just be the silhouettes. When I first used it, <laughs> I failed miserably to use it effectively. However, after seeing all the clips online and some extensive usage myself, this is now turned into my favorite piece of equipment in the game. Please keep it how it is. The amount of sick plays and funny moments with this thing are unlimited. Other than the atrocious frame rate I keep blabbering about, most of the bugs came from the UI not functioning properly, menus not loading, backgrounds becoming displaced and shown in awkward angles, and zooming while dying or during a game ending kept the HUD on your screen. I also saw a couple lighting hiccups on Bazaar, my legs clipped into frame whenever I slid extensively, there was no collision between any Spartans, friend or foe, and there was a full day where none of my battle pass progression for my challenges counted. I couldn't customize a single thing in my armor either. Oh, can't forget the dedicated server issues and fire teams not consistently joining the game together. Love that. And I think that's everything. Just wanted to say if I get invited to the other flights, I will not make another video like this again. I may upload gameplays of full matches, but making an analysis video of this magnitude is not going to happen again. I'm just not that into video editing as most other people. I may upload the matches themselves that I played as background footage in this video separately as well, so be on the lookout for that. Despite all the bugs, I had a great time with this flight, and honestly, it renewed my hope in the franchise. This game feels great. It's so fun to play, and I really want them to use this feedback to improve on it. I hope that they listen to all of the community and not just the 1%. But I really want this game to do well. That's why I joined the Insider program and made this video in the first place. This truly has the ability to put Halo back on top. Whatever Get Back to Throne 3 once claimed? Eh, probably not, but it's already generated a hell of a lot of buzz and setting trends for the gaming industry once again, especially with their Battle Pass system. I have never in my life while I joined, since I joined the Halo community, I have never seen the community so positive about any game in my life. I was so anxious for years that Infinite was going to fail, but after playing this, I know it won't. All these years of waiting will have been worth it. It just needs a little more work. Do us proud 343 Industries. Make this the halo you were always destined to create.